Every good show needs its own villains and heroes, but who is the true villain in this case? The contestants that are painted as selfish, or the ones behind the scenes orchestrating the parts? Hi everyone, and welcome back to Midnight Theories, and if you're new here, welcome to Midnight Theories. Mnet hasn't had the best track record when it comes to survival shows, and Girls Planet 999 is yet another example to add to the list. Many young girls left their home country to participate in Mnet's next big survival show, seeking an opportunity for growth, but left defeated by their destroyed confidence and dreams. In today's video, I will break down the show's structure and dissect some of the major concerns and controversies that followed. Girls Planet 999 is Mnet's recent girl group survival show to hit our screens, with the goal to create K-pop's next big girl group. The program was created to replace Mnet's biggest survival show yet, Produce 101, which placed a great amount of expectation to create the same charm, some even dubbing the program Produce 101 2.0. This generated hype for the show, but Mnet tried their best to separate the two entities. The most obvious change would be the program's base theme and aesthetic that was derived from Mnet's collaboration with NCSoft's Universe app. This was one of the main platforms used to promote extra content from the show and most importantly, host the voting. To further play off the space theme, each nation represented their own planet and the host was dubbed the Planet Master. In addition, the mentors on the show were referred to as the Master Council. Outside of the Master Council, for the fans and viewers, they were given the title Planet Guardians. They ultimately had the role of determining the ranks of each contestant. During the preliminary rounds, 13,000 applicants from or with ties to China, Japan, and South Korea auditioned before 99 contestants were selected to move forward. After the contestants were finalized, they were equally divided into three groups, comprised of 33 participants each. Groups were utilized to create cells, which were made up of one individual from each nation and formed by the girls themselves after the demo stages. These smaller units forced the girls to break out of their comfort zone and communicate with one another despite the obvious language barrier. However, netizens had mixed reactions and concerns revolving around the concept, as the units would either survive together or fail together. The cell system enforced the concept of keeping the competition balance between the nations, but netizens hated the concept for two major reasons. The first being, less notable trainees could have the advantage of skating by eliminations if they are lucky enough to pair with the popular member or well-liked slash talented members could be dragged out of the competition unfairly if their team failed to receive enough votes collectively. But not to worry, the show implemented a sort of safety net by implementing what they call a planet pass. This was used when the mentors would collectively select one individual from each country out of the eliminated contestants and give them a second chance to compete. Conventionally, on survival shows, trainees or idols within the same company would be evaluated together representing their respective agency. However, on Girls Planet, the contestants were shuffled into different pairings within their groups. This meant the girls within C, J, and K had an idea of who their competition would be to an extent. Moreover, the girls were also ranked prior to the demo stages by the mentors and peers, eliminating some of the initial element of surprise we usually see when introduced to some well-known contestants. The demo round immediately stirred the pot once it was broadcasted. The initial rage started when viewers felt the program was strategically manipulating some of the contestants' vocals to sound better or worse than they actually were. Other issues brought up were the number of auditions shown during the televised version and the speculation of the program pairing girls strategically to make certain girls stand out. Just like any survival show, the contestants of Girls Planet were under contract not to say anything about the program until it was over. This was referenced a few times by some of the eliminated trainees during their live streams. Despite any legal repercussion they may face, it did not stop a few of them from spilling some inside information fueled by their injustice. Young Chao was one of the first eliminated trainees to speak out. In a live stream after her elimination, she claimed Emna allegedly chose her and her twin sister's demo song. Fans of the show did not know what to make of the statement, since many viewers had previously criticized some of the contestants' song choices for not picking a song within their vocal range or dancing ability, the twin stage being one of them. Most viewers would agree that if all the girls were able to choose their own demo song, their performances would have made them shine brighter. The twins are a part of a girl group in China called GNZ48, where they show quite a mature image compared to how they were presented on Girls Planet. In a separate livestream, Shi Tzuyin also confessed that allegedly all the girls did not get to pick their evaluation songs. Really, 
She said she initially rejected the song and attempted multiple times to change it, but was ultimately powerless. She was forced to perform Sunmi Siren despite her objections and had to practice the song on her own. On the day of the demo stages, she felt confident enough to perform, but found out Sunmi, the original singer for her demo song, was introduced as one of the show's mentors. Her confidence immediately crumbled on site, but she had no choice to perform. To make it worse, her performance wasn't even aired. Shi Tzu-in was not the only contestant set up during the demo round. Former contestant Fu Yaning was at the receiving end of heavy criticism before the show even premiered. A clip of her went viral for dissing a veteran idol who was also participating in the show. Her evaluation team was given the song Helicopter by CLC. And that may have purposely picked the song due to one of the members of CLC, Yu Jin, would be participating. What caused the backlash was Fu Yaning was asked to say a few words to the original singer. Thus, the infamous We Go Up But You Don't clip was born. We go up, but you don't, but you don't. Mnet likes to manufacture a lot of the drama we see on screen, usually at the expense of these young contestants to rank in viewership. The short, chopped up clip was used as a promotional teaser for the show and wound up going viral. When the scene finally aired on TV, it was slightly different from how it was presented in the teaser and was heavily dramatized. We go up, helicopter. Whoa. Then I make kind of noise for the takeoff. But you don't, but you don't. <laughs> Fuya Ning was finally able to clear her name a few months after the clip aired and spill how the scene came to be. In an interview, she revealed that this was entirely scripted by Mnet as they made her say the infamous line and edited the situation to make it look worse than it actually was. She continued to say that the rest of the contestants and herself were completely surprised how it was edited that several contestants actually reached out to her. Despite the negative narrative Emna tried to push between the two girls, Fu Yaning and Che Yu Jin actually maintained a good relationship during the course of the show. Shortly before Girls Planet aired, a press conference was held. Chief producer Kim Chin Young assured the viewers that the show would take special measures to prioritize the participants' mental and physical health. He also included a list of measures they would be taking. Despite Mnet's promises to ensure adequate living conditions for its contestants, several former participants exposed the harmful living conditions that put their human limitation to the test. These young girls were expected to perform at their best despite the stress-inducing environment, all for the viewers' entertainment. In another one of Ling Chao's live streams, she revealed it took 40 hours in total to film the show's theme song over the span of three days and slept for about an hour per day. The girls' voices became very hoarse over the course of filming, but Chao even confessed to taking 10 lozenges in desperation to soothe her throat. Shi Tzu-in also confessed that she had a difficult time on the show. Although she qualified for the next round, she withdrew from the competition. The show stated that it was for health reasons, but her body language in the live streams may have hinted to other reasons. She said the filming conditions were hard on her. She shared that she hadn't slept for over 30 hours before her demo stage, and the girls did not even get breaks to eat and were forced to perform at their peak despite their lack of sleep and hunger. Some contestants were even criticized for sleeping during filming. It also makes sense that a lot of the girls were seen sleeping during the demo stages. Foreign contestants who did not understand or speak Korean were at a slight disadvantage due to the language barrier. Although Mnet originally claimed that they would be providing round-the-clock translators, contestants claimed this wasn't the case. Young Chao admitted she had a hard time on the show not being able to communicate with her cell members or teammates. After the girls had settled into their dorms, Young Chao asked the staff if they could provide her with a translator or dictionary at the very least, since her twin sister took their only dictionary. The staff responded, No way! We want to see how you communicate with each other without any help. 
This added more unnecessary stress and went against the original statement. In a separate live stream, one of the twins also said they brought a translation device but was told she was not allowed to use it by the staff. Some participants such as Bora and Wenzhe took the extra step to learn the other contestants' languages, but most trainees were forced to communicate by using only body language, English, or what very little Korean they knew. Ma Yuling said in a live stream that she was lucky enough to have been paired with a few C group members that spoke or understood Korean to translate to her. Competitions and missions weren't the only enemies these girls had to battle. When it comes to survival shows, dozens of contestants are forced to compete over screen time. It's almost impossible to give each contestant a fair amount of screen time during each episode, since the producers are given an exact time frame they must abide by. But this is not an excuse to show the same handful of faces each episode. Screen time is a common concern these viewers try to get across to these survival shows, but it hits differently when the participants themselves voice the same concern. J-Group contestant Kamimoto Konton used her precious screen time during one of her missions to speak out about this very issue. During the combination mission, she chose the rapping position and how to write her own rap. When the group performed, her lyrics showed exactly how she felt. Another prime example was when the foreign contestants' demo stages weren't aired. If you were invested enough in the show, then you could watch all of the demo performances online, but realistically, most won't take the extra effort. This is also a huge disadvantage to the participants. If people don't know they exist, their chances of moving forward are greatly decreased. After the demo stages were completed, the judges got to pick the first top 9. Kabuhara Ayana ranked 9th place, but most viewers were initially confused as to who she was since her full performance was never aired. And in fact, she was the only first top 9 contestant to not have her full performance shown. Even some of the mentors had their segments cut. In an interview with the star, Tiffany said, Actually, when I was reviewing Girls Planet 999, there was a lot of things that didn't appear on the show because I talked so sincerely. Anyways, I have a sincere heart for the girls, and I am very happy to be able to tell them that. While well, Tiffany had some things to say about the show, Sunmi had her own set of issues. After the first episode aired, the idol was attacked by malicious commenters. The issue became so severe and life-threatening that Sunmi had to respond through a series of tweets. Her fans called for the site to be taken down and for Sunmi to take legal action against the malicious commenters. Screen time and favoritism go hand in hand. The more Emna and the producers like you, the more screen time you get. Very few actually got the favoritism treatment, but the most unique case I want to talk about was Kim Dayan. Kim Dayan was the only contestant to experience both sides and give in the underdog storyline. In the preliminary round, Tan ranked first in the K-group, meaning she is the most skillful and well-rounded in her group. Her first performance was highly anticipated and built up. Despite the overflowing praise Tan received, Tan was cheated out of the top 9, which stunned all the contestants. Mentor Lin Hanbyeol explained in a separate episode that the reason they purposely kept her out of the top 9 was because she'd get there regardless. <laughs> this situation could have hurt anyone's pride if they were in her position. Tayan was frequently shown talking about her first place rank and not making it into the top 9, which made viewers annoyed rather than sympathizing with her giving the idol the opposite effect they may have wanted for her. During episode 9, the remaining groups were able to take the day off from worrying about the competition. Each group got to take a trip to a secret location depending on what bus they took. The special trips ranged from a luxury meal slash chiropractic treatment to a hiking trip that included paragliding, picking sweet potatoes in the countryside, and even Tan's mom's house? Viewers immediately accused Amnet of openly biasing Dayan and were upset that she was the only contestant to have their parent guest on the show. They further explained that Dayan was the main focus of the episode, with 50% of the show's duration focused on the young contestant. The other group's contestants had interesting team-based activities, but the shoot team went to Dayan's house. Not to mention, Dayan wasn't even a part of the team who visited. Making it an awkward encounter, this episode is what created Dayan's planet meme due to the viewers' dissatisfaction. At the third elimination round, Tyne finally made it to the top 9, ranking in at number 2 and eventually debuted. 
If you do wind up getting some of that shining screen time, it may not always paint you in the best light. Devil slash evil editing is an editing tactic to purposely portray a cast member in a negative light to villainize them in the eyes of the viewer. Whereas angel editing is the complete opposite by highlighting a person in a positive light, making them look more likable. Emna is no stranger when it comes to evil editing, and they certainly did not shy away from it. Many viewers felt that the foreign contestants were strategically painted in a bad light throughout the series. It became more apparent in episode 6 and 7 during the combination missions. The C-group contestants were often painted as the cause of trouble during the missions. Wang Yeol, a C-group contestant, received massive backlash online when her segment was aired. The singer was edited in a bad light due to her leadership skills, not taking her teammates' suggestions into consideration. She was shown to have a one-track mind when it came to producing the group's songs, which led to their downfall during their interim check. There was also the case with Liang Zhao, who was shown to be inconsiderate to her members when it came to practicing their raps. This was the trio's first time rapping, which made their mission especially difficult, not to mention they had to write their own raps. Liang Zhao was shown to ask her members to repeatedly listen to the song, and during practice, she was seen constantly going to the bathroom. She would ask her teammates to practice independently rather than with the group. Her team member, Yi Chaeyan, became frustrated because of the situation that it brought her to tears. Similar to Fu Yanning and Che Yu Jin, Yi Chaeyan and Yang Zhao maintained a good friendship outside of the show. Chai Bing was one of the C-group's participants that viewers felt was hugely targeted by Mnet's evil editing. Chai Bing was a popular contestant that kept a steady rank. She consistently placed in the top 9 until an unfavorable edit may have caused her position to drop dramatically, eventually leading to her elimination. During the combination mission, Chai Bing tackled the dance position and was voted in as the leader by her teammates. Once her team segment aired, the tone was already set by pitting against Chai Bing and her entire team. Bing was portrayed as an overbearing leader that needed things to go her way. Before presenting their choreography, one of the masters asked who choreographed the dance number, to which Chai Bing answered, me. In the scene, teammate Doa stepped up and clarified that a few of the members participated in creating the choreography. After the performance, her team received negative feedback and mentors commented that Chai Bing was stiff and not in sync with the beat. They suggested her part go to another member if she could not do it. Since the first mission, Chai Bing was criticized for dancing off beat. Viewers would even post her past dance covers online to mock the singer and criticize her timing. The singer explained that her position as leader stretched her thin because she had to take care of her team. Netizens rewatched the segment from the beginning and caught some of Mnet's sneaky editing skills. During the checkup portion, when the mentors asked who created the choreography, two different clips were created to create the tension scene between Doa and Taiming, and it was all caught due to the hair placements. But what really set off the hate towards the singer was Emnet's mistranslation. When Chai Bing spoke up to her teammates, she allegedly said, I'm the leader. I think that what I say matters. Let's keep practicing without stopping. No more opinions. However, Emnet's original translation was, I'm the leader. I can do whatever I want. Don't raise your opinions anymore. Chai Bing was mistranslated again in the next episode when she and Tan were co-leaders during the creation mission. Both girls took turns being the leaders before choosing an official leader. During the conversation, Bing said to Diane, I agree with your opinion. I want you to balance the team out. But originally, it was translated by Mnet. I support you giving up as the leader. This issue stirred up the debates with fans online from all over the world, especially in the Chinese online community. Why would Mnet evil edit the Chinese contestants in the first place? There are a few theories as to why Mnet may have been editing the foreigners in a bad light, even though the program disguises itself as uniting the nations. Recently, China has created stricter regulations for its entertainment industry in an attempt to improve fan culture. The Chinese government claims fan culture is negatively impacting China and is hindering the healthy development of the entertainment culture. Weibo announced that they would be suspending fan club accounts of Korean celebrities. They have also banned audition programs in their country, making their youth flock to other countries to pursue their dreams. 
South Korean survival shows included foreign contestants to participate in their programs for a few major reasons. This was their attempt to gain fans from their country, but now that the Chinese market is closed, there is no reason for Emna to cater to them. By evil editing, they can decrease the chances of foreign contestants debuting in the final group. Netizens also speculated that now that Emna can no longer change the voting, they have to rely on evil edits to push the contestants they want into the debut team. This goes to show that viewers shouldn't take everything we see at face value because we are never given the full picture. If some of you are not familiar with Mnet's voting history, let me catch you up to speed. Before Girls Planet 999, Mnet had the most popular survival show on South Korean TV, known as Produce 101. The show was cancelled after four seasons once the producers were caught rigging the votes and wrongfully eliminating contestants. This also happened in another one of Mnet's survival shows called Idol School. Everyone involved was either sent to prison or faced some sort of legal repercussion. Emnet apologized and stated that they would no longer do survival shows. They have since come back on their word. Before the show aired, netizens were already skeptical about the voting system. Due to their voting controversy, Emnet was no longer allowed to be in charge of the votes, which was why they partnered with NCSoft. The official voting for the show would only take place on the Universe app and was opened internationally. In previous survival shows, only people who resided in South Korea were allowed to vote. This was great news for international fans, but some were upset the voting wasn't split fairly. 50% of the votes would be from Korea, while the other 50% would be international votes, meaning the Korean vote held more weight. In the beginning, once you entered onto the Universe app, you had to vote for three girls from each group. Netizens believe the vote should have been split evenly between the nations, which would give each country 30% of the votes. When it came down to the final voting period, the cell system was abolished, which meant there was no national quota like the prior rounds. The voting system then went on to change to a one-pick system. This rule was the catalyst that dramatically changed the competition. Prior to the one-pick system, foreign contestants had successfully accounted for over half of the top 9 spots. With Korean voters no longer needing to choose a J or C contestant to push forward, this put the foreign contestants at a disadvantage in the final round. Dedicated fans of some of these contestants took extreme measures to make sure their favorites would make it past the eliminations. Other methods used to bypass the voting restriction were voting campaigns. Fans of the show would team up with big fandoms of already established idols to ask for support. Fans would also host giveaways for these support projects as incentives to increase their chances. During a special live broadcast, before the final episode aired, the program showed the current rankings. K-Group took over 8 of the top 9 spots. Popular foreign contestants that were consistently in the top 9, such as Izaki Hikaru, Kawaguchi Yorina, Sakamoto Mashiro, and Shen Ting, chopped and ranked dramatically. Fans of the show speculated that this change in the rules was put into action to decrease the chances of foreign contestants debuting in the final group or releasing the number one spot. In the finale, the top 9 most voted contestants, regardless of nationality, would get to debut. As many expected, since the K vote weighed heavier than the international vote, most of the debut members were Korean. Viewers were furious at the ratio, since the show prided itself as a global girl group project, some even still skeptical of the final vote. Not to mention, international fans saved the show in viewership, as the show suffered from extremely low ratings in Korea. Girls Planet never exceeded 1% in ratings until the final episode, where the produced series had an average of 2 to 3% per episode. Don't even get me started on the length of time it took to announce the final members. A few invested fans even took the time to lay out the possible outcome of the final group if the voting system was done differently. For example, if the Korean vote and international vote weighed equally, the final lineup would have been slightly different. After the finale, many viewers were in disbelief of what they just watched. It almost felt like they were watching a live experiment take place, and that may have been because it was sort of true. Before the series ended, producer Shin Young Kim said a season 2 would be a good idea, and it was later confirmed a few months later. Kepler, Girls Planet debut group, were supposed to attend and perform at the 2021 Mamas. However, they had to cancel the group's appearance. At the award show, the announcement was still aired and revealed the second season would be called Boys Planet. The show would be open to anyone born before 2009 and was for individual trainees, meaning no companies. The announcement was not well received as Emna has had a history of using female competition shows to experiment. For example, Street Woman Fighter, Produce 101, and Queendom. The boys version also tend to have better budget and production. 
It's way too early to tell how Boy's Planet will do, so I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Unfortunately, Girl's Planet could not replicate the charm of the Produce series, even though it felt like it was just Produce 101 in a space costume. The show was underwhelming and dissatisfying when we are promised a global girl group, but falls short of its promise. Should Girl's Planet have kept the 3-3-3 ratio to stay true to its global girl group concept, or do you prefer the final lineup to not have any limitations? Also, will you be watching Boy's Planet when it airs? I know I barely touched on Kepler just because it can be an entire video on its own, so if you would like to see a video on the members' own journeys and struggles, write it down in the comments below. As always, let me know all your thoughts in the comments below because I love reading everyone's different perspectives. And with that being said, thank you for watching and enjoy your stay!